It's way faster than poking all these holes with an awl. And one of those right tool for the job or working smarter not harder. I mean, if you were doing this out in the field and all you had was an awl on your handy dandy German army knife, then it would work. I did this whole side with them, with it. But man, I'll tell you what, just pounding a couple little nails in there and now I got a bunch of nice holes right there. I marked the ones that I didn't get so that I can pull them out easier and now I got just a couple more to poke in. I realized as I was separating out the threading so that I can use this fold over for, oh, fold this over for a flap on the inside that once I fold it over I'm not going to be able to see my, my holes that I've matched up and marked and so uh, I'm doing it now. Okay, so to get this inner thread, inner uh, leather part, kind of to fold over for a blade, hopefully, a blade protector, uh, I had to cut all this, this quilting here, and it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Your knife is sharp enough to cut through the leather, so try not to, but here I'll give you, this is like the last piece, you just kind of pull it apart to expose the threads, um, and then you kind of cut down in there. I'm pretty sure this is what's called ripping threads, uh, but I'm not a tailor yet, so... There's the last of it. Now I got this nice. I'm gonna use these two up here as my starters. And so I want to leave them some pretty strong leather. Uh, so I'll cut probably something like this. Oh man, look at this. It kind of makes me scared now how sharp these knives are and how easy they cut through leather. I mean, the whole idea of like leather armor and stuff just seems like a joke. Uh, this will go in here somewhat like this. This piece will go over it. When I fold it over, I'll probably put this piece, yep, that'll have to go like this. Um, maybe even curl it a little bit under as like an inner part of the sheath. This piece will also hopefully kind of fold over. Let's see. Now I can line up my two sets of holes that I have right here going, and then these ones, and the knife, Joseph stop that for a second, the knife will go down in there, um, how did I want it, yep, like that, so the knife itself will fit down in here, yeah, perfect, right about to there, Wrap this under. Wrap Are you gonna tell me what you're gonna do like at the that. edge? Mama! Mama! Yeah, it'll be Mama. Mama. Okay. So, like that. Or do I want the knife back? Hmm. Maybe either way. Can't have it too tight or my blade's gonna. My blade's gonna cut through the leather, but that's the idea anyways. Alright, here's the semi-final product before I start sewing it. Uh, I had to cut some of these inner strips of leather out to make room for where it's going to be sewn. And then also, I kind of shaped it and it was getting kind of crowded, so this leather here really is kind of going to be the blade guard side, so it's kind of fold over like this. The knife will be in the sheath about like this. And then here's my line uh, right back here of the nailed holes that matches up with the ones that I poked with the awl. And when I put it all together in there, all together, <laughs> this will fit and it'll sew down like that. It's got the inner sheath in there. It's tight enough with these two holes lined up that if I'm, you know, the knife won't fall out. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is start out with these ones really tight right here, and then I'm going to sew from the bottom up. So it's it's more tight down at the bottom. I may adjust the how long this is. We'll see. We'll see what I want to do with that. So a little bit cut in here. You can see that's kind of lined. This is still there for the extra liner. My whole idea is that I don't want to cut my thread, and I don't want to cut through my sheath. What I'm using for thread is uh, artificial sinew 
to, this is what I mentioned a little bit in my fireside chat about self-imposed limits. And I'm going to have this needle, which is just a yarn needle I borrowed from my wife, to go through the holes and to pull my artificial sinew through. Plus, it will make my sheath minty fresh. Here's the finished product. It worked out pretty well. Get a little close up here. It's in focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not the prettiest. I mean, I'm not a professional leather worker, but it's definitely very functional. They all mainly lined up. Some of the holes were not perfect, and so I just stuck the nail down and tapped it. That turns out to be a lot easier. Let me get back up a little. That turns out to be so much easier than using an awl. <coughs> so I got that going there. I used about 12 feet of the dental floss. I went like this, and then I did that again. And then I wanted to double it over. So it ended up being, no, six feet. Yeah, so that's 12 feet. I got like a six foot wingspan. So I did it like this once and then twice. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then I had about 12 feet. And when I stuck it through the needle, it had two pieces hanging down. So every time I did a stitch, it was really two pieces of the dental floss. I didn't end up tightening here and going down. What I did is I did a couple really strong up here in these first two or three holes and then I just went down and up and down and up and down and up all the way down to the end and so I had every other stitch and then I just went back up again. I also did quite a few, um, I think three or four extra ones down here at the bottom just because I figured that it's these are my stress points and so when I got done it's got threading on either side um, and I cut a little chunk out here of the original boot and I've just sliced the rest of it into some fringy tassel-y situation. It's sort of stiff now but I figure over time and when I wear it down maybe put some oil on it or something they'll get a little bit more traditional. Also it I tested it out um, not in this video I sent some pictures. Uh, it works underneath of the belt this way if you want it to be extra firm up against your body or you can wear it on the other side of your body um, through the belt like this, and so it would, be, it would be like this, sticking out. But even if you have it this way, underneath of your belt, you can still grab it, you pull it out. Um, I don't think you can see down inside of here, uh, but the little inner double sheath leather worked out. I had to cut a few sections of it away just kind of by eyeballing it and when I started folding it over you know it would be too crowded down here and I and I checked it's that whole measure twice cut once deal I made sure that it's going to line the entirety of the inside of the sheath and importantly I made it to where the blade points away from my threads so hopefully it will not cut itself open um, and it fits down in there and, and again it's it's tight enough that it won't fall out you know if you're climbing over through the woods and things I'm very ha pleased with it. I think that this is definitely something that you can do. I finished it off with what I think is a surgeon's knot. It's like a square knot, so left over right, right over left, except instead of just one regular overhand, you do it twice, and then you tighten it, and then you do it twice, so it kind of holds itself a little bit more. Definitely doable. I used one upper half of one boot and I got the whole set of boots I think for ten dollars at a thrift store so I got plenty of other leather I could make other sheaths I could experiment with different um, styles and then also one thing that I'm not so so excited about is when it's in the belt it kind of is pretty low and so I thought to myself I can just cut like a new belt loop right here I can just cut a slit right here if I want to and then when the belt goes over the knife and through that, um, it would ride a little bit higher. I haven't done it yet, I'm not sure. Again, measure twice, cut once. It's not like I can uncut it once I cut it, but overall, grand success.